All right, and welcome back. So today we are starting chapter two, and we are going to begin in section two, two dash one, which is all about if then statements as well as converses. So by the end of this video, we should be able to recognize hypotheses and conclusions. We should be able to state the converse of an if then statement, use counterexamples, and understand the phrase if and only if. So please have out your guided notes and let's begin. So a conditional statement, or we also call that a conditional, is often written in if-then form. We often use the letter P for hypothesis and Q for the conclusion. So if we have the conditional statement if P then Q, again P is going to be the hypothesis and Q is going to be the conclusion. So for example on the right hand side, if it is snowing, then it is cold. Snowing is going to be the hypothesis, and then it is cold is going to be the conclusion. We also have a couple other forms that we use. We can say P implies Q. So it is snowing implies it is cold. We also have the form P only if Q, which is it is snowing only if it is cold. And now we're going to swing it in reverse. Q if P. It is cold if it is snowing. So let's go through an example. In each of the following conditionals, underline the hypothesis once and the conclusion twice. So on the left-hand side, it says, if it rains, then the game will be canceled. And we know that it rains is going to be the hypothesis because we are in an if-then statement. So if it rains, that's the hypothesis, the game will be canceled is going to be the conclusion. We have angle A is acute if measure of angle A is equal to 60 degrees. Now, since we only have an if statement, this is going to state Q if P. So angle A is acute is going to be our conclusion, and the measure of angle A is equal to 60 degrees is our hypothesis, because it's Q if P. Notice that if then implies and only if are not part of the hypothesis or the conclusion. We're looking at what's coming after those few words. Awesome. With this in mind, please work on problems one through four on the guided notes. So we also have what's called the converse. The converse of a conditional statement is formed by interchanging the hypothesis and the conclusion. So let's say we have the conditional statement, if Q, then P. If today is Tuesday, then tomorrow is Wednesday. Well, if we want to talk about the converse, it's going to be if Q, then P. If tomorrow is Wednesday, then today is going to be Tuesday. Now, these don't always make sense. So we just want to get our feet wet in how to identify a conditional and change it into its converse. But we're going to talk about later in the year that sometimes these aren't true, and that's fine, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's go through another example. We want to give the converse of each of the following conditionals. So we have two conditionals. A, if points are coplanar, then they lie in the same plane. We're going to assume that to be true. And if the measure of angle X is equal to 110 degrees, then angle X is going to be obtuse. This is also true. Well, let's look at the solutions of this, and we're trying to give the converse. So we're going to be switching if P, then Q. It's going to be if Q, then P. Well, that means that for A, if points lie in the same plane, then they are coplanar. This is true. But if angle X is obtuse, then the measure of angle X is 110 degrees. This could be true, but we're going to say it's false because we do not know definitively that this is the correct statement. It could be 91 degrees. It could be 179 degrees. So we have to think a little bit more in depth when we are creating these converses because they're not always going to be true. And again, notice that you cannot assume a converse is true just because the original statement or the conditional statement is true. And one way of proving a statement is false is to give what we call a counterexample. So let's go through an example. <laughs> an example of a counterexample. I love it. So example three, tell whether the statement is true or false and then write the converse and tell whether it is true or false. If the statement or the converse is false, just provide a counter example. So we are given 
two angles are adjacent if they have a common vertex? Well, let's talk about the solution. Well, the statement is false. In an if-then form, the statement would be, if two angles have a common vertex, then they are adjacent angles. And one counterexample to provide is the angles may not have a common side. The converse would be, if two angles are adjacent angles, then they do have a common vertex, and this is to be true. So there's sometimes going to be false statements, and a counterexample just tells us one piece that's going to prove it false. That's all we need is one piece, and we're going to be talking about more examples of these soon. But for a counterexample, we find the students love it because we, we want to dissect and just find that one thing that's going to throw the whole statement off. And that's totally fine so long as we are within our logical thinking basis. Awesome. So with this, please work on problems five through eight on the guide notes and resume when you're ready to move forward. And lastly, a statement combining a conditional and its converse is what we call a biconditional. As shown in example four, which we're going to be, be talking about next, we're going to have definitions or biconditionals. So again, if we have a conditional statement, if P, then Q. Let's use the example, if today is Tuesday, then tomorrow is Wednesday. We already talked about the converse, if Q, then P. If tomorrow is Wednesday, then today is Tuesday. Now we're going to talk about what's called the biconditional. It's going to be P, if and only if, Q, so our hypothesis, if and only if our conclusion. Today is Tuesday, if and only if tomorrow is Wednesday. Both the conditional and the converse are true, which means we can create the biconditional. Today is Tuesday, if and only if tomorrow is Wednesday. So let's go through an example for example number four. We're, gonna, we're asked to write the biconditional as two conditionals that are converses. Line K is a bisector of segment XY if and only if K intersects segment XY at its midpoint. So let's think about it for a hot second and let's talk about the solution. So we could say that if line K is a bisector of segment XY, then K intersects segment XY at its midpoint. And we can also say that if line K intersects segment XY at its midpoint, then line K is a bisector of segment XY. So what we did there is we broke down a biconditional, and we know that a biconditional is a true conditional and a true converse, and we separated them out together. And you'll notice that they're kind of flip-flopped a little bit, which is totally fine because that's what a converse is of a conditional. And I, I know this is a lot. You're doing really, really well, though. But please work on problems 9 through 11 on the guide and notes. Let me know if you have any questions. We're going to push through this. This is when we're really starting to use a different part of our brain, and we're going to work hard with this, and I know you are going to do well. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.